This is your typical positional servo in that there are hard stops. This can only rotate so far and then stop and rotate in the other direction so far and stop. So it has about a travel approximately 180 degrees. The positional servo is typically used in remote control type vehicles where what you're doing is controlling the ailerons, the elevator, flaps or whatever it may be, and so you need to move it into a certain position and hold it there. Uh, maybe what you're doing is controlling the throttle. So the throttle needs to go in a certain position based on the joystick and then hold it in that position. The positional servo has two major components. There of course is going to be the motor, but there needs to be some way for it to determine if it is in the right position or not. So there needs to be some feedback. That is done typically through a potentiometer. So in this particular positional servo, again we have the motor, but we have in here a rotary potentiometer. That's our feedback device. If we look at the other end, the business end or working end of the servo, you'll see here is the shaft from the, uh, the output shaft, but that is controlled through the motor through a series of gears so that we get ample torque into this drive. But in doing so, it is also connected to the shaft of the potentiometer. So as the motor turns, turns the gears, turns the output, it is also turning the potentiometer. There is also the mechanical stops that are a part of this so that this motor as well can only turn so far. A typical servo motor will have three wires. There will be two wires that will be for supplying power. So typically you will have a black and a red and you'll have some other color corresponding to the signal wire. If all I do is provide power to my two leads, my black and my red, my motor is not going to move. It needs to have some signal in order to make it move from position to position. Again, the purpose of that third wire. Servos come in all different sizes, but regardless, again, we'll have that three wire connection. So we'll have the black, we're going to have the red, and we'll have some signal wire, in this case on this side here. Now a, a positional servo can be modified in many cases to make it into a continuous rotational servo type motor. What I mean by that is we still use the same three wires but rather than have physical stops those are removed so that this can turn continuously and then we can use those signals that would normally command it to a particular position to move it forward or back. The disadvantage is we're not going to have really good or any speed control over it um, so it's not ideal but it does make for a fairly good way to create a basic drive system. The way that they take and modify the servo, they have to remove the mechanical stops and you also have to sever the feedback circuit in some fashion. So that when the motor is commanded to move to a certain position, it's going to keep on moving till it gets into that position. But if the feedback circuit is cut, it's going to have to keep on moving, keep on moving, searching, hunting for that desired location. And since it's not going to find it, it'll keep on turning in that particular direction. When it's commanded to go in a different direction, the direction will then reverse. It'll be looking for that position, looking for that position. And of course, again, since the feedback circuit is cut, it will not be able to find that, so it'll continue to move in that direction. To stop the motor, we would send a normal pulse to move the motor to the center position. And when we do that, and if we have the motor properly nulled or centered, our motor will then stop. So we can have a forward and we can have a reverse and a stop. 